A little while back, I made a 100% completion guide for the game Cleo, A Pirate's Tale, because I enjoyed it so much. This video is a return to Cleo in order to try and highlight what exactly made me enjoy it that much. Ahoy, I'm Scurvy Banana, and I make videos and guides related to pirates in video games. Feel free to pillage and plunder the subscription button for more of this sort of treasure. Thanks. But this story is about someone else. Cleo, A Pirate's Tale is a roughly four to five hour long narrative point and click adventure game that released in 2021 from a German solo developer named Christoph Schultz. It's a lighthearted storybook tale full of beautiful pixel artwork, mesmerizing soundtracks, and some great voice acting in between the puzzles. It's a real love letter to the Monkey Island series. Upon first launching Cleo, I was really taken aback by how pixel perfect the artwork was. Simply looking at the title screen with its mysterious steel pan drum music was enough to let me know I was in for a high quality experience. Every scene in this game is a real beauty to look at, even those with muted color palettes. The sound was great as well. Besides a pleasing soundtrack, the game also features some pretty enjoyable voice acting throughout. Multi the cocktail mixer and his market-leading cocktail mix machine towards McAnally Parms. The main gameplay consists of moving Cleo around the map in a top-down view with pretty typical WASD controls. You spend most of the time chatting with NPCs and working your way through the point-and-click styled puzzles. As far as the puzzles, some are as simple as finding an item and bringing it to the correct NPC, while others are more hands-on with multiple steps, such as fishing or crafting cocktails. The puzzles are relatively easy to figure out. If you're seeking a difficult experience, this might not be it. A risky on the docks. Fantastic choice. Coming right away. Within the gameplay, there are a few required sections of a mini game called Kraken Fodder. This portion is the largest culprit for any negative discussion I've seen over the game. The too long didn't read explanation is that Kraken Fodder is essentially a modified version of the incredibly simplistic card game typically called War. In War, you and the opponent draw a card and the larger number wins. In Kraken Fodder, you do this as well as rolling dice alongside each card pull. Given the nature of its design, of course, RNG can be an issue, but strategy also plays into who wins and loses. Personally, I think the negativity around the inclusion of this minigame is greatly an overreaction, as it's only played three times in total, and the player is only required to win in a single instance. Looking back, I think you can even actually skip the third play of it altogether. I'll try to keep this as short and spoiler-free as I can. The plot centers around a teenage girl named Cleo. She works in her father's seaside bar while dreaming about a pirate life of treasure and adventure. After a disagreement with her father, she's sent to work in the kitchen before paranormal events act as a catalyst to cast her out to the sea. I will say that the latter half of the game feels a bit smaller and perhaps rushed maybe? This could be a flaw in my thinking since the only open world type section of the game is chapter 2 and the chapters I'm complaining about here are chapters 3 and 4. They seem to be more linear. Overall the story is very poignant and touching. Besides being a heartwarming tale, by its end I felt it was well written. It had interesting characters and managed to make nearly all of them feel purposeful in the world. And to sum it up, I absolutely loved Cleo A Pirate's Tale, with its beautifully crafted world and heartwarming storytelling. Overall, it produces a great and high quality experience for all ages.
Since you've stuck around this far, here's your secret monkey fact. The only apes not considered great apes are gibbons. Gibbons are lesser apes.